All right, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, my name is Hunter Smith, and I'm excited to be uh, able to introduce uh, today's speaker, and I'll uh, uh, tell you a little bit about him in, in just a moment. Our webinar today is on the LCI and SNR trading system. We're actually very, very uh, excited uh, about this brand new expert system that is now available in the brand new Metastock 14. Uh, it's a, a very robust system. Um, and we have the ability here, we're lucky enough to be able to, to present this to you today and kind of walk you through uh, the different strategies involved with this system. Uh, now, first off, as always, we need to get the legalities out of the way. Let me go ahead and read this disclaimer. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metasoc and its accompanying add-ons. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell. It is guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors and traders who are aware of the risks inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on use of the software, any trading strategies or information provided in connection with the company. Now, a little bit about today's presenter, Logan Connors. Many of you might already know him. He was actually with uh, Metastock for a little over five years, and he was working on this system a significant period of time, uh, it really perfecting it be before we launched uh, Metastock 14. And we are extremely excited to have him here uh, uh, today to present his system and go over some of his strategies. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Logan now, and uh, please feel free to let us know if you have any questions. Thanks, Hunter. Uh, yeah, as Hunter said, I had the opportunity to work with Metasuck. I'm sure I've talked and worked with many of you uh, in the past. Hopefully, it was a good experience um, for everyone. Now, as kind of was mentioned before, I developed the LCI trading system uh, basically for personal use, more or less, and that's what I was aiming to do was to help improve my own trading. And it just essentially took off. So it gave me the opportunity to become now a professional trader, and that is what I do full time. And uh, I, I quite enjoy it. So all of you have access to everything that I've been working on in the markets, you know, full time for the last oh, five years. Um, so hopefully it's something that you can find that you can apply. Now, primarily I do trade options. I trade multiple markets uh, depending on what we're looking at. So I, I do trade the underlying stocks um, quite a bit more on an intraday basis. Um, options, Forex uh, a lot, and then a little bit of some index futures as well. So um, this particular system you can use within multiple markets. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll dig right in. I do have a lot to cover. Now, if you have any questions as I go through the presentation, please feel free to ask. Um, if it's something that's a little bit off topic, save it to the end and uh, I'll stick around for as, uh, for as long as needed to help answer your questions. Um, and I'll also give you my contact information as well where you can shoot me an email with any questions that you might have on information that's covered. Um, but let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's dig right in here. Now, just as we get started to kind of give you guys some information, um, what we talk about today and something that I do that's, uh, that's free, you can go and register for it on, on the website, um, is do a, a, a newsletter. And it just focuses on different training aspects focused on the LCI system within Metastock, uh, workflows, uh, you know, buy and sell opportunities that maybe I'm looking at, interpreting. Um, by utilizing that, it can help you to understand maybe my way of thinking, how I use the system. Um, so don't forget to go and register for that. It's absolutely free. Give yourself an opportunity to maybe shadow myself, so to speak, on, on my thought process behind what I'm doing. And then also, for those of you that haven't used Metastock or are using an older version of Metastock, something to keep in mind. Now, 
I'm going to go over several workflows. One of those workflows is a pre-filter scanning technique that I use. It's very simple, very straightforward. You'll be able to understand that. But that scan you'll get for free if you get set up with a trial today, whether it's a 30-day trial or an extended trial opportunity. Or if you're using an older version of Metastock and you want to test out the new Metastock 14 again, which the LCI system is included in. Uh, automatically uh, you get upgraded to that and you'll get that scan as well so the code for that is LCIA um, utilize that as well to get yourself that free scan your sales reps uh, will have that download available for you once you get set up if you've already upgraded and you haven't had an opportunity to utilize this scan again get in contact with your sales representative and they'll uh, be happy to send it to you as well if you've already if you're already utilizing Metastock 14 okay now just kind of to dig right into it today again the LCI system can be utilized across multiple markets and today I'm going to be focusing on trading the options market now options unfortunately to a lot of investors kind of gets a bad rap uh, in a sense that um, they feel that it's a lot more risky than trading the underlying itself Okay, and anything can be riskier than something else if you go into it not knowing essentially what you're doing or how you need to structure that particular trade. Okay, now because options are a leverage based instrument, they tend to get over leveraged now, and I'll explain that here in a minute. But just some of the misconceptions of options is one, you know, options are more risky to trade than the underlying stock itself. Okay. In some aspects that may be true, however, in the way that I'm going to show you and teach you today, that is incorrect. Okay? Options can be much less risky to trade than the underlying stock, and I'll show you how that works out here in a minute. Options require advanced option-based strategies in order to be successful. Okay? We've all heard this, especially if you're a veteran trader, you may be using some you know, more advanced strategies, or if you're a beginner, you look at options and you just are overwhelmed by the amount of information, okay? This is also false. You don't have to have an advanced option-based strategy. Actually, the primary strategies that I use when trading completely focuses on simply buying puts or buying calls, okay? and we'll get into the strategy here in a minute, but you don't have to um, have an advanced complex methodology behind the options themselves in order to be successful okay and then the third is selling options offers greater profit and less risk because 90 percent of options expire worthless you hear about a lot of trading strategies that are involved behind selling options okay now in the option game when you sell an option if you go and you look at your risk for your broker um, I know my broker for example they will highlight what my potential profit could be or what my potential risk is when you are the seller of an option, you are assuming or taking on the potential of unlimited risk. Okay? Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to trade in a fashion that requires me to take unlimited risk, okay? risk potential. Okay? So is selling options and a selling option strategy, um, it, it, does it offer a greater profit? No, it doesn't. Okay? Sometimes psychologically it can be easier to handle since you might be able to have a strategy that is potentially more accurate over time. However, when you have those losing trades, okay, when you have those losers, typically they wipe out all of your winners okay, or a huge portion of that. So by utilizing the strategy today, I can show you how you can limit your risk by maximizing your profit. Okay, So again, so just going into it. Are options actually more risky? And like I said before, no, they're not. Okay, When an option is purchased at a specific price, the max amount that you can lose on that option is the price that you paid. Okay, So again, if I purchase an option, let's say it costs me $100 to make things easy, I cannot lose more than $100. All right? I cannot lose more than $100. The simple aspect of controlling the amount that you are paying for an option will always keep you in check, not allowing you to risk more than you intend, okay, 
while still allowing you to leverage m a much larger position. Okay? Now what I mean by that is, is if you're trading the underlying stock and if you want to buy 100 shares, which is equivalent to one option contract, okay, then in order to purchase 100 shares of that stock, it would cost you a lot more money up front in order to purchase them. Okay? So if I purchase a stock at $100 um, at 100 shares, right, I'm going to have to front the entire cost in order to make that trade. Whereas with an option, I may only have to front $1,000, okay, which is going to limit the amount of money I have to have in the market for that particular position. Okay. Now, this does not mean that there's not risk associated with the option. If you've looked at options or if you've traded options before, if you're briefly aware of them, you know that there are a lot more revolving parts when it comes to trading options that you must understand. Uh, you know, we have to look at relations as far as time. Strike prices aren't always going to be exact, but I'm going to show you how you can calculate that so you always know where you're sitting and you're always tra trading the right contract. Okay, here are the mistakes that traders make. Okay, and then this is everybody, whether they're professionals, whether it's me, whether it's you. Okay, and if someone tells you that they haven't made these mistakes before in their trading career, then they're lying to you. <laughs> okay, um, and you know, unfortunately, as traders, some of the times we have to learn about these mistakes the hard way. Okay, so take my advice for it. Uh, you know, there, there's a saying that says, "Smart." men learn from their own mistakes where a wise man learns from others mistakes okay so learn from my mistakes learn from other traders mistakes and just take my word for it that you need to stay away from these points now the first one is over leveraging their account on a single trader position okay what does this mean okay now this is where options start to get a bad name okay typically traders go in and they think okay Great, I can't trade Apple. Apple's trading at over $100 a share, but I can trade their options. I've got $5,000. I'm just going to put $5,000 into all of Apple because it'll allow me to leverage more shares. Okay. The problem with doing that is now what's their maximum amount that they can lose? It's the entire $5,000. You know, it's, their, it's potentially their whole entire account. Okay. Options are very volatile in the sense that the price movements of them fluctuate up and down very rapidly. Okay. So that's where they get in trouble. You can be consistent and then you put a bunch of money into one position thinking that it's going to be the, the, the mover that's going to make you millions. Okay. And then you're wrong. Now all of a sudden it's the trade that's lost you everything. Okay. That's the number one problem. Now. Number two, failing to acknowledge that trading is more of a marathon than it is a sprint. Okay? okay, And what I mean by that is, again, you're not going in and you're over leveraging your entire account to make all your money onto one trade. You need to manage yourself out so that you can have multiple attempts at making those winning trades. Okay, It's not a sprint. It's a a career choice. You know, you don't go into a job making a risk that could potentially get you fired the next day, right? You do what you're supposed to, what you need to, to allow you to advance into the future. Okay? And as your account builds, I promise you the money is going to build as well. Okay? As long as you keep that strategy and you keep focused on what you're trying to do. Okay? Number three, not starting with enough capital with unrealistic ideas of gains. Okay, again, this filters back into that over leveraging. Someone wants to start trading, they think that they have five hundred to a thousand dollars. Now they might be able to trade a few different types of options with that, maybe two trades if they're lucky. Okay, but that's only giving them a 50-50 percent chance that they have to get it right or else they're gonna lose their entire account. Okay. Now what I've seen for a good a good value to start with for swing trading, uh, which is primarily what we're going to talk about today for options, and which is I find is the best, an individual investor on the minimum side of things, okay, this is on the small end of the scale, you should be starting with at least $5,000, okay, on a minimum scale to trade options. That will give you flexibility to trade 
at a trade cost of maybe one to two hundred dollars per trade and allow you to make up for the losing streaks that you're going to have because in the market even if we have a tra trading system that's say 50 percent accurate okay, to make things easy it's not going to be one winner one loser one winner one loser one winner one loser the market doesn't work that way okay the, what's going to happen is you're going to have a string of losers and a string of winners a string of losers a string of winners the problem is you need to have an account that's going to handle those strings of losers okay we can't over leverage ourselves because when the losing comes into play all right we need to be able to handle those those losses so that we can pick back up on the winning side okay and number four they fail to understand key fundamental events or simply ignore them altogether okay we always hear the term that news is noise and yes that is correct okay however scheduled reports which is earnings okay major economical reports or F FOMC which happened this week and if you guys were watching the market you saw the humongous push there at the end of the market because of what was released okay these are scheduled reports they're not noise they don't just come in and out that cause fluctuations in the market these are actual reports that are traded based off of on a consistent basis okay now what that means for us traders is we always know when that's going to happen it literally will take you as a trader an extra one to five minutes when you're analyzing your trade to simply search when that particular instrument or stock is going to have their earning report okay now trading into earnings utilizing options and the techniques that we'll go over can be some of the most successful trade setups that you can have okay just because of the movement that's offered with it okay but if you're not aware of these events you're not aware of what's happening on the underlying or expectations of that report then you can be shooting yourself in the foot and it's as simple as looking at a calendar I'll show you within the Metastock Zenith program how you can do it okay are there any questions before we move into the LCI method kind of on those option basics those terms that I covered feel free to type in the chat if you do and we'll go ahead and we'll answer answer your questions I'm gonna go ahead and keep moving forward um, but if you have questions please uh, go ahead and type them in okay so why trade the LCI method okay now the LCI trading system it looks kinda scary when you first see a chart I will admit there's a lot going on however if you take a step back and just kind of understand some of the concepts now there's a lot of training videos available you know on my website on YouTube channel the your sales reps at Metastock will understand it as well but it looks like a lot but it's really not okay it's taking basic basic information and displaying it within your chart okay now with technical analysis there are three data types that we can analyze and if you've listened to a webinar that I've given before at any time you know that I bring this up every time okay now the three points that we can analyze is price volume and time okay that's what makes up the key factors of technical analysis now obviously the most widely used point is price okay that's the most widely used volume okay, is one of the most important okay however it's the most misunderstood and misunderstood okay and then the third is time now we don't have time okay we don't know what time is we don't have a crystal ball all we can view is historically what we've utilized okay but you don't realize that we utilize time in almost every single input for every indicator that you've looked at think about any other moving average that you've used a 20-day moving average looks at a concept of time over the last 20 days okay so we utilize time within that now the LCI takes the simplistic form of these three variables and allows them to work together a lot of problems with other systems okay is that they use price too much okay they all every single indicator that they have is focused around price and it's focused around several different times and 
and manipulating price this way and this way and this way. And pretty soon, the same data point that you're looking at is now contradicting itself within several different other indicators. Okay? Now, by utilizing price along with volume in relation to time, okay, gives us three different aspects to the market, what the instrument itself is telling us, to then give us a entry signal or approach that's confirmed by each one. Okay, so rather than just price contradicting or confirming itself, they're all working together. Okay, and then. So by utilizing that with the LCI scoring, it's pulling all these factors together to give us an accurate scoring uh, as far as the reversal, as long as we're utilizing it, of course, with the support and resistance levels. Now, because it's a reversal-based system, it allows for optimum entry placement. And when trading options means that you are able to get your options at lower volatility, which means lower trade cost and more potential trade profit. Okay. Now, time is money, okay? not just in the option trading world, but in all markets, time is money. And a lot of traders, a lot of us fail to realize this. Okay? A lot of trading systems, especially trading systems uh, like uh, trend types with moving averages, uh, the MACD, etc., they're structured in a way that you need to be in a trade with that particular instrument all the time. If I'm using a moving average crossover, I'm in a trade all the time, okay? Now, over time, it gives an appearance of, of a consistent equity curve, okay? But in reality, it's unrealistic unless you are only trading a few instruments, okay? Because I can go in and if I can pinpoint those volatile spots and only be in the market a couple weeks at a time, whereas in someone else is in the market for the entire year, I would rather have slightly less profit knowing that I could have my money working somewhere else for me. Okay? So the LCI system is designed to find you high probability trades at efficient trading times within the market to maximize the time that you trade, your trade is active. Okay? So if you look at the system tests, you'll notice that you'll have a, your equity will go up and then it'll flatline, meaning you're not in the market. It'll go up, it'll flatline, meaning you're not in the market. It might go down a little bit and flatline, okay? But the more time you spend in one given trade, in one given strategy, is less time that you have to take advantage of other opportunities in the market. And there are new opportunities in the market every single day, okay? So we need to fail to realize we can't, we can't marry into one particular instrument because we've got these opportunities all around us every single day, regardless of market conditions. And then not all stock options are created equal. Just because a symbol may have a lot of active trade volume doesn't mean that its options are equally traded. Okay? Number two, create your own list that fits your trading criteria prior to scanning the market. And that's what we're going to go over here in just a moment when we get into the MetaStock program, okay, is how to filter that list. To understand what bid and ask spread is along with volume and open interest in determining which options have greater potential. Now, bid and, bid and ask spread is a concept that applies to all trading markets. Okay, what, what is someone willing to sell something for and what is someone willing to buy something for? Okay, That's the bid and ask spread in a nutshell. The spread itself is the distance between those two spots. Okay. Now, if I've got someone that's willing to sell something at $10, but someone that's willing to buy something in fi at $5, that's a $5 spread, okay? And that leaves a lot of margin in between of error that could potentially happen when I try to close out a position. If the market says my position is worth $8, but no one's willing to buy it at $8, guess what? I can't get rid of it at $8. I'm going to have to sell it lower at what someone else is willing to buy it for. And I'm going to miss out on, on money there. So by pre-scanning the market to find stocks that have that opportunity will prevent you a lot of headache. Again, learn from my experience. Um, there's been times where I, <laughs> when I was first trading, I placed a trade and it just took off. It went in the upward direction. I'm sitting here you know, counting dollars thinking that this is great. Well, I went and looked at the spread and the spread was literally $3 between the bid and the ask. Okay? Now my option itself was worth $6. 
Okay, I almost lost 50% of my option value because I couldn't get anyone to buy it at where the asking price was. Okay, so very important. Make sure that you've got that that volume behind there. Now let's dig into the MetaStock program and really dig into the LCI trading system. Now, in the Power Console, the first thing that you want to do to set up your trade strategies again is to scan for a predefined custom list. Okay. Now the way that we do that is you can utilize the scan that you will get today. And I just call it my volume price filter. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edit this real quick just so you can see some of the aspects that are behind. Okay. Now I'm looking for the close. Okay, this is information report. Looking for volume. Okay, now the first key to scanning is you want to take a volume average of the stock. Okay. I like to see that my average volume is upwards of a million shares average traded per day. Now what is that ensuring to me? It's ensuring that the options themselves are also going to have volume. Does it guarantee it? No, it doesn't. Okay. But it's helping me weed out those opportunities. Again, the idea behind a systematic trading is to help you save time to develop a workflow. And if you have to go through several different stocks that don't fit your criteria, then you're just wasting time that you could be utilizing. Okay. Now, the second aspect of it, okay, if we go into it, is we want to look at stocks that are traded within a specific price. Okay. Someone that's trading a $5,000, $10,000 account isn't going to be able to afford options okay, on a stock that is much higher. Okay? They might be able to afford it, but then it's going into that over leveraging. So with one of my accounts, for example, we're, we opened up a position in Netflix. Okay? Because of the price Netflix is trading at, we still purchased out, you know, a couple ticks out of the money but the option position itself for 10 contracts okay, was, was over $10,000 for one position. Now, the reason why it's so expensive is Netflix can move $9, 10 $15 a day. Okay. Leroy, are, is anyone else experiencing sound issues? Okay. All right. If you are, um, Jeff and Hunter are going to give you some steps on on how to fix that. We'll we'll, we'll keep moving forward. Um, now, so you want to establish what you're going to be able to trade. Since I'm trading with a larger account now, okay, I look from for stocks that are anywhere from five to five hundred dollars. Okay, basically, I'm wanting to take potentially all the players. Okay. Now, do I ra I rarely will trade something that's that's down below 10 or 15, but sometimes the opportunity presents itself. Okay, a good example of that was Micron a couple years ago. Okay, now by filtering this out, we can give ourselves a, a a good list that we can then run our LCI scans on a daily basis. Okay, to find ourselves those buy and sell opportunities. Okay, so I've already went ahead and I ran the scan. And what I did is in the report, I saved it as a custom list. Okay. Now, the way that you do that is if you're in your report, simply all you do is click Save List and give it a name. Okay. As you can see here, I've got already listed main. Okay. That's my main list that I work out of. And this filter, okay, this filter scan that I run, I typically run it only once a week, okay, typically, all right. John, yeah, you don't have the LCI price and volume scan. That's because it wasn't created. It's something that you'll need to, that you'll need to get from your sales rep, okay. So if you've already upgraded to Metastock, uh, please, please reach out to them and uh, or you can reach out to myself and I'm happy to send you an install for that, okay. So once we've got our main list, Developed. Now I can go through and I can run the scans 
points on the opportunities that I'm looking for on that main list. Okay. Now, what do I create my main list from? Well, if you're trading options, okay, you want to create your main list from the U.S. optionable stocks, provided you're trading U.S. options. Okay. Now, if you're utilizing the LCI system to trade the underlying instrument, okay, which is you know absolutely perfectly fine, okay, then you'll want to trade based off of the database in your market areas. Okay, so you want to you want to utilize all the stocks themselves. Don't run the the filter scan utilizing an index group. Now, what I mean by that is, is don't run a filter scan based off of the S&P 500 and then save the list from the S&P 500 because you want to save some time. Okay? A lot of times, especially with those stocks that are grouped in the S&P 500 or these major indexes, they will all move somewhat together. So it's almost like you're trading the index itself, but uh, in a more annoying, <laughs> a more annoying Annoying way as far as making sure that you're on the right side. Okay, utilize the entire global database as a whole. So if you're trading in India, use the entire NSE exchange. Okay, if you're trading in Australia, use the entire Australia Australian exchange. Run that filter so you're essentially creating your own group from all the stocks that are available. Okay, so for my main list, since I'm trading options, I ran it on the U.S. optionable stocks, which has 4,300 securities, just by running the simple filter, I'm down to 1,200, which is a much more manageable database, and it's giving me what I want to see, right? It's fitting my criteria and weeding out everything else that is just noise. It's just noise. Now, once I have that main list, I can run a scan, okay, by simply highlighting the LCA bullish or bearish. I typically run them both, okay? And I'll click Start Exploration. Okay. Now I've already, to, in, in purpose of saving time, I've already run an exploration. This is from yesterday, heading into today. Okay, because I want to give you a sense and a feel of how I analyze the market heading into today's trading. Okay, and how it worked out. Now the first thing I I always look at is I look at both my bearish and bullish reports together. Okay, now. If we're looking at this, this is a bearish report. Okay, now notice I, you know, out of 1,200 instruments, I really don't have that many signals. But really, what is the highest scoring that I have? It's 66, right? And then it kind of drops off into the 45. So they're kind of mid-range scoring to low-range scoring signals, okay, that are actually provided. Now, if I go back and I look at my my bullish signal report, okay, you can see that I had a lot higher and better opportunities to the long side than I did the downside. Quantity was about the same, okay, the amount of signals that showed up in either scan was similar, indicating that we might be a little bit in a sideways trend right now, which we are. You know, if we look at the index, we can see that we're kind of We've kind of been moving a little bit sideways. We haven't really been trending. Okay. However, the scoring behind all of these signals is a lot better than my bearish. So what that said to me is, okay, I, I want to be looking to a bias on the long side. Now, right now in the market, you should have a bias to the long side anyway. Right? The market's been going up for the last, what, four years, three years, nonstop. You want to utilize that methodology going into it that if you're going to short something, okay, you need to have some good reason behind it because of the market current. Okay? So I, in order, what you do is once you get the scan, the report, I can go through and I can rank, of course, based off my score. So I'll go through and I'll rank and I'll take some of the higher uh, instruments that I had for the day. And I will look at them and see what is listed on the chart. Okay, so I can take and I can rank and I can select multiple, click open chart. Okay. And straight from the scan, okay, so this is GLD, this is one of the plays that we did today. I can see that I had a 75% rank here at this support level. 
Okay, I was in a definitely in a downward trend. But what caught my attention for GLD? Okay, couple things when it comes to the when it comes to the LCI system itself. Okay, we want to look at volume. Okay, the first thing I look at is volume. Now, as we had this drop, okay, as we've as we've had the steady decline, my volume has declined into support. Okay, now what did that indicate to me? Is it indicates that there's a lack of selling, okay? A lack of interest to the downside. Now as we start to flatten out, you can see that volume even gets to a point where it is exhausted. It's underneath our lower band. Indicating that it's such a low volume. Then notice on our signal where we got our bounce, look what volume does. Volume jumps up extremely high. Okay, so as we get this decrease and then on our bounce we get this massive increase which immediately to me says we've got a lot of buying pressure coming in. Okay, we've got a lot of buying, a lot of volume that's coming into this particular trade on the day. Okay. So based off of our trade rules yesterday, as we're looking at our as we're looking at our signal. When you trade a reversal system, it is crucial that you utilize confirmation. And the easiest way to confirm a signal is to see if price breaks the high of that signal bar. It's the easiest and best way that I've found. It sounds too simple to be true, but you know what? A lot of times in trading it is. It's the simple things that work. Okay? So by utilizing our limit, our entry we can see here for uh, going long, was at 111.35. So I wanted to see price break 111.35. Okay. That, that, gave me, that gave me exactly what I needed to see okay, in order to confirm my long trend. Okay. Now, with this breaking to the upward direction, now comes the structure of now, now what? I found my trade opportunity, okay? It looks like a good trade opportunity. I've got great volume, okay? Now I can also apply my Fibonacci template. I'll apply a template and I can look at my Fibonacci's which are automatically drawn for me, okay? And you can see retracement wise I'm right at our 100% level, okay? On our retracement. Okay. So now that I'm at th I'm at this retracement, I can see my scoring up at the top. I see that I've got a really high scoring, which has set me up for what I want to look for. Now, how do I transfer this to options? Okay, stocks are easy, right? We put a we put in an entry at the break of the high, where, and we buy X amount of shares in relation to our risk, right? Now, by you by looking at the LCI, we've we've got our established stop. Okay, so what this stop is doing is it's analyzing the movements, okay, on a daily basis as well as the cycle structure. And it says, okay, if we have a successful reserve a reversal signal here that breaks the high, then we're going to be looking at this stop distance, okay, as far as allowed movement that's required for the stock to go up. If we break out of that distance, then chances are that we're going to be heading down additionally, um, and it's a trade that we don't want to be in. Now, our entry being 111.35, and and then our um, our stop being 108.07 is roughly a distance of about three was it three dollars and thirty cents? We'll say. So I've got three dollar. I've got a distance of three dollars and thirty cents stop from from the suggested entry to my stop. Okay. Now what we do immediately from there is if we were to buy a hundred shares, okay, and a hundred shares drop three dollars and thirty cents, how much would we be risking? Someone type in chat so I make sure you guys are still awake with me. If I'm risking three dollars and thirty cents movement on a hundred shares of something that's purchased, what am I risking? 330, exactly, right? So now, take that $330 figure, and now we can transfer that over directly to our options. 
okay, directly to our options. So if I go into the icon program, okay, now this option workspace that you see is the built-in flex document that comes with Zenith, built in. And the reason I use it is because, one, it saved me a lot of time. I didn't have to create anything. Two, as it works very, very well. You don't have to have some complex workspace in order for something to be effective. The one that they have got built in is perfect for what you need. Okay? Now, going in, I always purchase. Now, if we're looking at strike price, so first we want to analyze our strike price and we want to analyze our expiration date. Okay? I always look at a month out for expiration. Okay? Again, let me say that again. I look for a month out for expiration. Okay? Because the strategy behind the options is getting a fast movement initially off that signal, getting that reversal signal, okay? And you're only going to be in the trade maybe a couple weeks. So we're swing trading the option signal. Okay? Now, do I need 6 months worth of time in order to do that? No, I don't. Okay? So I can get a cheaper option, okay, that fits within my time parameter. And then as far as exiting, we're looking to close out the last week of expiration. Now, what happens if I fall between months? So if I can trade the current month is say has 3 weeks left and then the next and then I've got the next month, okay? Then I will trade the more recent one provided that I can get at least a week and a half of movement before the last week of expiration. Okay? Again, let me say that again. I look for at least a week and a half to two weeks of movement prior to expiration to purchase that contract. Okay? Now, the strike price. What do I want to utilize my strike price? Strike price, you're going to play at the money or one to two points out of the money. Okay? Now, depending on the strike price that you're going to select is going to depend on your particular instrument and what strike prices are available. So let's go back in. Now, I've already filtered to look at expiration or option expiration dates which is in April, which is our month out, okay, which is going to be the third Friday of April, which is April 17th. Now, up here at the top, I can go to filter, expiry filter, and you can see that I selected only the ones that fit my time frame. So now that I've got those selected, I can then analyze what it's telling me. Now, the color coding in this option watch is very helpful in a sense that anything that is kind of this light green white color indicates that we're in the money okay yellow indicates that it's at the at the money or considered at the money at that time and red means out of the money so the options that I'm looking to purchase are are the yellow to the first two red okay now if I look back at my chart I'm going to ask you guys this based off of the movements of GLD okay do I, and right now, so this was going back at 111. We got in a little bit after that. It was closer to, to 112 that we got in. But based off of our strike prices being 112, 113, and 114, okay? So if we're looking at 114, which is two points out of the money, does this stock have a high probability, just based off of the visual aspect of looking at it, does it have a high probability, would you say, that we're going to hit 114? How do I go from Zenith? <laughs> I have them both loaded, and then I just click on the icon in my taskbar. It's a good question. So they're both loaded. So right now, Metastock is on top of Zenith, and then if you click Zenith at the bottom, it'll be on top of Metastock. Good question, though. Okay. But let's, let's, go, let's go back to it. Does this stock have a good, uh, if you would say within two weeks, does it have a high potential that we would be above 114? I've got one answer. Yes. OK. 
Okay? It does. Based off the movements, we can clearly see that within a couple weeks, especially with the movement recently, that we could be at 114. Okay? So the strike price that we're looking at is 113 to 114. Okay? At the time we purchased it, which was at 112, we were looking at 113, okay? which was our strike price, which was, which was two points out of the money at the time of uh, w at the time that we placed the option, just before 112. Okay. Now, what was the value that we said we could risk with a hundred shares? Who remembers? Three hundred and thirty dollars, right? Based off of our allowed point, we could risk three hundred and thirty dollars worth of risk. Now, that was le that was for a hundred shares that we would invest, and if we were to invest a hundred shares, okay, for a stock that cost a hundred and eleven dollars, what would that cost us in value wise? Money wise, what would it cost us for what would it cost for us to buy a hundred shares of something that's at a hundred and eleven dollars? Right. Exactly. Eleven grand. Okay. Now I can go in, if we're looking at our options, so for one, we want to look at our volume. We've got a lot of volume behind our options, okay? We're at 900, okay? Our spread, we've only got a four cent spread. It's very tight, which means that once we get a run, we've got a high likelihood that we can then get rid of the option when we need to, okay? Now, when purchasing an option, Okay. The cost of the option that we see, so if it's $1.87 like we're looking at now, you times that by 100 and that's what's going to be the cost of the option. So this option would be $187 for one contract. Okay. So if my total risk, and it was, again it was a little bit lower than we were looking at, but if we're looking at $114 which is, which is $1.44 per contract, which means it, it costs us $100 and $44 to purchase, how many contracts can I buy okay, to risk $330? Two, exactly. Okay? But now, how many shares am I leveraging with this contract? Can it, yes, the LCI can absolutely be used with the L, with the end of day version. Okay, I'm just pulling up the option screens within Metastock Pro. Option screens you can use anywhere. I like Metastock Zenith; it gives you a lot of information. Um, if you're looking for a real time platform, I would highly recommend testing it out over end of day if you're trading options, so you've got the real time aspect. But Zenith itself cannot be used with end of day, but the LCI system absolutely can be. Okay, so going back, so yeah, so now we're leveraging, we're leveraging 200 shares, right? So now I'm leveraging 200 shares. It's costing me $330, okay, rather, as opposed to 1,100. But I'm actually doubling the amount of, of shares that I'm leveraging on this move as if I were to have bought it originally in the first place. Does that make sense? Are, do you guys follow me? So now, okay, my maximum amount I can risk for this trade is $330. Okay? It does not matter if tomorrow the market collapses because some CEO jumped off of a building, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Something happens, it collapses down several points, way beyond my stop after market. The maximum amount of money I can lose is three hundred and thirty dollars that's it okay when you're buying the underlying stock okay, if we had a hundred shares at eleven you know we're risking that same amount all of a sudden we get slipped okay it comes back down then we're potentially risking a lot more especially if after market hours it drops okay so it's a great question is there any uh, can you please, let's go back and look at the calculations one more time. 
That's a great question. And then Kevin, we'll get into your question for the Delta. Yes, I do look at Delta and I look at Theta, but we'll get into that here in just a second, okay? So let's go back into Metastock. So what's our first step? Our first step is we run our filter scan on the global database that we're using for our particular region, whether we're in US, whether we're in India, Europe, it doesn't matter, okay? It will work in all structures, okay? Secondly, we run the scan for our LCI buy and sell signals and we compare the reports. We see where there might be a bias relating between the signals, okay? Now, if you're trading an account that only goes long, okay, obviously you're not going to be looking to sell at all, okay? But it's something good to look at. So we've already addressed our biases long. The market has been rising for, you know, however many years now. We definitely have a long bias. Now, we get our signal. We see that it's got a high scoring. We like how the indicators are set up. It's at the end of our Fibonacci retracement, right? It, our volume decreased down to exhaustion and then on our signal increased, showing we have a lot of buying pressure. Okay, so you guys with me? Reviewing this again. Now we're analyzing our signal, okay? From here, this is where our calculation comes into effect. Our suggested entry is 1135, okay? Our long entry stop is 108.07, okay? So what's the distance between those? Rounding wise, it's $3.30, okay? So this is where we're getting the 330. So three dollars and thirty cents different if I were to trade an even lot which is a hundred shares of the underlying instrument okay if I trade a hundred shares how much am I risking if it drops three dollars and thirty cents I'm risking three hundred and thirty dollars okay does that make sense John and everyone else does that make sense Okay, so what you're doing is you're, we cannot ignore the fact of what technicals give us. Stocks require, okay, a certain amount of room to move, okay? However, we cannot over leverage ourselves where we're ignore, where we're taking into consideration only the movement that's required and ignoring our risk management. We have to establish ourselves and also make sure that that $330 that we're trading okay, is going to fit within our account, okay? If I've got an account of $5,000, can I risk $330 of it? Absolutely, okay? If I'm trading an account with $1,000, do I want to be risking $330 of it? No, okay? But unfortunately, traders, we don't use that common sense, and it's the most important aspect behind your trade, is controlling what you risk, okay? By... Do I use a set percent? That's a great question. Um, I don't utilize a set percent uh, for each specific trade, more as an average amongst trades. So what I do is I, I basically tell myself if I were to get into a run, okay, if I were to lose a bunch of trades in a row, how much could I lose? Okay. Now typically depending on your account size, depending on your risk. I mean, these are kind of some other factors that we're structuring. If you have more questions on it, it's a different webinar within itself, but you guys can email me and I'm happy to send it to you. But essentially, you want to set yourself up so that you can have at least a month worth of bad trades, okay, before you have to get cut out of the market, okay? Now, what I do typically is I say, okay, how many trades on average am I going to trade per month? And I'm, usually I'm looking to trade on average one trade a day swing trading. So that's 20 trades. So I want to make sure that I have to be wrong 20 times in a row before it takes me out. Okay? So yes, you can use a set percentage, which is also going to incorporate with your technicals. They have to merge together. If one, on the technical side of things, the risk is way higher than what you can afford on your percentage, you shouldn't be trading it. Okay, you should not be trading it. That's where you start to over leverage yourself. Okay, so by utilizing and it works the same way with buying puts. Okay, the methodology that we're using right now, looking at the distance between our LCI selected entry versus our our stop suggestion. Okay, 
finding that distance works both up and down. Okay. Now we're not selling options. Again, if I sell an option, I'm assuming unlimited potential risk. But if I buy the option, I can only lose as much as I buy it for, yet I can leverage potentially more shares than what buying it would for a lot less. But I can have that security that if the market blows up tomorrow, I'm only losing what I paid for those positions. Okay. So let, let's, run, let's run through another quick example that we're looking at right now. Now, if you're a subscriber to the uh, newsletter, I pushed out a newsletter on Caterpillar saying we wanted to look at Caterpillar. Okay, I know that they're kind of under some fire right now for machinery not being requested, but you know what? Honestly, that's noise. Okay, Caterpillar has a lot, their hands on a lot of other aspects when it comes to energy, gas, etc. Okay, across the board. Now, looking at our potential entry, so we're looking at our most recent signal in in relationship to today, which was two days ago. Okay. Our suggested entry was 80. Okay, so Caterpillar gave us a suggestion of 80. Okay, now what is my stop level? It is 77.52. So 77.50. Okay, so what's the distance between my entry suggestion and my stop? 2.5. Okay, so then what do I? So what is my risk? on this trade per 100 shares 250 right okay so it's 250 so if I go back to my option platform again in this case I'm using the Metastock Zenith platform okay I can look at my Metastock Zenith I can type in cat up at the top and I can see at 80 right now can I buy a contract to fit within my risk that I'm trading? Now, obviously, if we're trading a much larger account where my percentage size allows me to say risk $1,000, I could be looking to buy four contracts, right? Okay. So you're not limited to just one contract. Okay. We're purchasing as many contracts that allow us to, but we wouldn't want to go in and buy a contract okay that's you know out of the money or maybe at the money if it was trading at say three dollars and fifty cents okay then that wouldn't be something that would fit within my profile okay unless my profile itself allows for more risk okay so again that's just working through another example okay now I know we're running out of time here quickly, but so let's go over a couple more things. Are there any other questions on structuring position sizing? Does it, does it make sense on how you can use an option to potentially leverage more with assuming less risk? Okay. Now all of a sudden options don't look too bad, do they? Okay. Why my conclusion about CAT again? Um, I can, if you have uh, questions on CAT, uh, go ahead and send me an email, Willie, and I'll I'll dig into that later. It deserve it deserves its uh, its own section of time uh, to explain Caterpillar. I'll give you guys my email address here at the end. We'll have a site where I can hand it out. You guys will have that. You can also visit the website. You can send messages and contacts through there as well. Okay. All right. So let's dig into a couple things right now as far as Greeks and implied volatility. Um, looks like we're going to go a little bit over, but uh, hopefully I'll only keep you here for an extra 10 minutes. Okay. All right. So quick question. What about your sell profit points? That's a great question. Okay. The LCI systems going to give you your initial targets, your primary target and your extended target. What do I expect? Okay. 
What am I expecting for my primary target? Okay. The other great thing about options is that they are time sensitive. You're going to get to a point where you have to sell the option. Okay. And that's what comes into play with when do I choose to sell an option in relation to hold it? And that has to do with our Greeks. Okay. Now, delta, which was just brought up, a delta just simply means the amount okay, that an option is going up in relation to every dollar of movement the stock goes up. Okay? But as the stock goes up, that delta itself is going to go up. Okay? Theta looks at time decay. So for every day I have that open, what am I losing on my time decay? Okay? But remember, I'm already setting up my established risk so this is what I'm risking to begin with okay whether it goes up whether it moves sideways okay I'm already keeping that in perspective okay so knowing so how to keep the theta positive and delta and delta neutral okay again that kind of goes into another another subject <laughs> kind of within itself but the point the reason why you want to purchase in the money or one tick out of the money options is if you get a nice LCI signal bounce that keeps you moving okay, in that direction, you're getting the option for cheaper. So the discounted price in the option okay, is going to make up for the delta once you're in the money or you surpass your strike price. Okay, So that's in a sense how they balance themselves out. Also, the way that you can balance out your delta is like on our other on our um, on our example of GLD, I could afford to buy two contracts in relation to one contract or you know a hundred shares of buying the underlying. Okay, so now I've got two hundred shares working for me versus a hundred shares working for me. Now it might take them a second to kind of ramp up and get that delta going, but let's say both of their deltas is at 40 cents. So for every dollar the stock moves, my options move 40 cents. Okay, but now what happens when my delta becomes 80 cents? Okay, now in relation to 100 shares, I'm moving 60 cents more a dollar than what I would be with the actual underlying. Okay. Do I ever go out more than one month? Um, typically, no. I will. There will be sometimes I will go out one month if that is going to encompass a earnings report. Okay. If I can trade, if I can trade heading into an earnings report that's shortly after. So it might be that same physical month, but not the actual option expiration month. So for example. What I mean by that is, is if uh, there's an earning report that comes out, say, April 25th, okay, then I may look to purchase the second month option. But usually, okay, again, there's always an opportunity in the market. We always fear that getting out that for some reason that we'll never be able to get back in. Remember, you can always get back into the market. Okay, We can close out a trade. There's always another opportunity to get back in. So rule of thumb, I typically keep it within 30 days just to keep my time perspective, my time costs in check. Okay. Do I trade weeklies? No, I don't trade weeklies because a weekly trade, one week does not offer you enough time to, to trade. Is what I'm going to say. Uh, it doesn't give it enough time for it to, to move. You're basically restricting yourself on the signal, requiring you have to have more movement within a time. If you go a month out, okay, to, and I can tell you your typical swing signals and the typical movements that you see are going to be a couple weeks to a month. Okay, It's just taking that stress off of you, even though you might have to pay a little more for it. In the long term, okay, it's going to be more profitable to you long term. Plus, you're going to get a lot better volume behind it as well. So, okay. Now, one little trick that I want to show you. 
Uh, yes, the LCI absolutely goes to Forex. Absolutely. Okay. So let's let me let me finish up here, and we'll dig into some of these questions, and I'll open it up for some uh, an, some question and answer. Okay. Now, one little trick that you can analyze within Metastock Pro. Now, unfortunately, that for you Metastock end of day users, you won't be able to do this. But if I apply my Fibonacci template, okay, I can chart the implied volatility of an instrument. Okay. Now, the way that I can do that is, is I type in the symbol, okay? So the symbol here is GLD, or excuse me, Caterpillar, C-A-T. So you can see my, my symbol list box pop up. And then I type A-T-M-I-V dot U as umbrella, okay? Now, that stands for CAT, so our symbol C-A-T. And then A-T-M-I-V dot U, or in other words, at the money implied volatility okay now if I do select symbol you're gonna see it load it will change this to line quickly you're gonna see it load the implied volatility for caterpillar now by default it's gonna load the 30-day call which is in this case what we want to look at if I want to change that I can right-click and go to a change field and I can select 30 day put, 60 day, and 90 day. Okay. So I'm just looking at the 30 day, which is what we have by default. Now, why do I use the Fibonacci retracement? Okay, the Fibonacci is measuring the cycle peaks in the volatility itself. So by analyzing the ratios that I'm in, I can identify if I'm up towards the top peak of volatility indicates to me that the options are costing more. Okay? If I get an option that's down at the lower end or below my 50% line, I can even remove the short term here so you guys aren't confused. If I'm below this line, I'll even change it to white here, Okay, I know that I am in the lower spectrum of volatility, so I'm getting my options for a good price, okay? which is a great power behind the LCI because of its reversal aspect of finding that. You're getting options. You're getting the stock. You're getting the instrument that you're trading okay, at a good price, at a price that traders are willing to purchase it for, and that's why we have support levels at that level. It's indicating that the market agrees that it's at a reasonable price for purchase or for selling, depending if we're going to the downside. Okay. So that's just a quick trick for Metastock Pro users. You can type in the symbol you see in the expert commentary. You type in the symbol. Okay. No extension. So if you're looking at Apple, for example, that's AAPL dot O. Okay. It would just be AAPL ATMIV dot U. So the ATMIV.U is, its, is within itself an extension of that symbol. But by doing that, you can chart your implied volatility. You can utilize your expert advisors okay, on your volatility. You can even apply that symbol within your scan properties if you'd like okay, to utilize. So that's just a quick thing that I want to wanted to show you. When you're analyzing those options, you want to make sure that you're getting that volatility down in the lower spectrum, which means you're getting them for a better price. You're not overpaying for it. Okay. So thank you guys for joining me. Let's go ahead and let's open it up for um, all of your questions that you guys have. Please feel free to to bombard me here with questions that you might have. Yeah, you can you can chart the the price of the option as well. Uh, if you have Metastock Pro, yes, you can. Do I sell the option if the underlying stock price reaches your initial target? Uh, yes and no. Okay, my primary target I'm looking for if I have a lot of resistance in the area. Okay, which typically you will. Yes, I will sell it. Okay. Um, depending on the movement, if I see that it's kind of if it just kind of breaks through that that profit target level and keeps going, then I'll hold on to it. But if prices ever come back down into that region, I make sure that I'm closing. 
So utilize the LCI trailing stop loss to trail your position. Okay, it'll keep it'll keep you at an appropriate distance to allow it to move, but it's also not going to be so loose that you're going to lose a bunch of money when it pulls back. Okay, earnings. That's a great question. So why would we want to trade around earnings? Okay, now any type of gap that you see in the market, okay, is associated probably with an earning report. Okay, let's look at Amazon, which was a trade that we had. Okay, another one. If you watch my training videos, Estee Lauder was a very was a very um, successful trade we had as well. Okay. So here, heading into earnings, you can see that the we started getting at two, okay? We started getting into buy signals with the LCI. We're at that support level where traders feel that it's an appropriate value to start buying, okay? We have the move heading into earnings. Now you can see this gap up, okay? That's where you can make your money. Now why would I... Based, let's let's take a step back here. Based off of what I've already talked about with position sizing our options, how would you see that this could be very beneficial to trade heading into earnings? Okay. Why would it be successful for you to trade into earnings utilizing options? Okay. What's the reason? Volatility increase, but let, let's 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 break it down to our risk. Okay, if we're trading the underlying instrument into an earnings report where we have a potential gap, okay, right? Exactly. I I said limited risk and more upside. Exactly. Okay, I can only lose as much as I pay for that option. That's it. I can only lose as much as I pay for that option. So if I keep that risk in check, okay? If I keep that risk in check and it gaps up for me, how much money am I going to make up for me, okay? If it gaps up this much, your delta is pretty much one, okay? For every dollar you move, your option contract's going to move a dollar, okay? And you're way in the money. You're in the money. You could fulfill a contract. This is where you make the money, okay? But what happens if you're wrong? What happens if it gaps down against you? Okay? What happens if it gaps down against us? We only lose what? We only lose what? The premium. And another word for premium is the price that we paid for the option. Exactly. Okay? The price that we paid for the option. Now, if I owned the underlying stock and it goes against me, well, you know, God help you. Right? You get a gap like this where it, uh, let's say I owned 100 shares of Amazon to the downside because I thought that there was a downtrend heading in, and it gaps up against me $30. Okay, that's $3,000 you just lost on the underlying position of Amazon, okay, when your risk was only set up for $300. Okay. So you can see where you can utilize options in your favor to manage risk. Originally, options were introduced into the markets to allow traders to manage their risk, to hedge their positions, a cost of insurance. And you can do that with the instrument itself. Okay. Those are good, those are good questions. Good questions. Now just to let's just finishing up here. Again, don't forget about the, the newsletter. If you want to get updates, help on the LCI trading system. Okay maybe see what I'm doing, then you've got that available. Again, the promo, if you haven't upgraded to Metastock 14, the LCI system that I just showed you is completely free within Metastock 14. It comes with it. Okay? 
And the promo code is LCIA. Go ahead and use that, and you can get a, an, an upgrade discount. You can also, if you haven't used Metastock before, okay, you can get a free trial, or what I would even recommend is you can do an extended trial Metastock offers. The way that it works is you can pay for one month of a subscription and get two additional months for free. Okay? You need more than 30 days, ultimately, to figure out if something's going to work for you. By doing that, it really gives you a realistic time frame to utilize Metastock, utilize the LCI to determine if it's going to fit with what you're doing. And I will do everything I can on my end to support you. I come up with different videos, materials, every single week that you can look at to try to help you understand what the market is moving. Okay. And then here is my contact information as well as Metastock's information. If you don't have a direct sales rep that you work with, you can reach them here to schedule an upgrade or to schedule a trial. I also have some trial links as well that if you would like an online link to register and you would prefer to do it that way, you can email me at info at lcinvestmentanalytics.com and I will send you that Metastock trial link for you to register online of your choice. Now, um, to watch the seminar again, yes, the seminar this, this webinar is being recorded, so you'll be able to review it. I'm sure that it will be posted uh, on YouTube within a few business days, probably by the end of the week depending on how busy they are over at Metastock. I know that they, uh, they're they doing a lot of work, so it just depends on their, their time constraints. But it will be available. So. Um, so let's go ahead and open it up for, is there any other additional questions that I can help answer? Okay. Last question. So the question is, at the beginning of the seminar, you said that you, um, you knew the stock was going up to 80, I think. You knew it by the demand of the volume. Which stock are you referring to, John? The first one. Gold, gold isn't trading at 80. The, one, the only instrument that's trading at 80 currently is Caterpillar, if we go back to Caterpillar. And the 880 was my entry price. So I had, I had a buy signal for Caterpillar, but utilizing the rules of the LCI, it has to break the high of the signal bar within three days, okay? which puts our, our entry, our suggested entry, at $80. So that's how I knew where I wanted to get in. And then from there, I can calculate my stop based off of my uh, based off the stop distance is calculated, and I can I can calculate the distance between the two to understand how much I need to purchase my option for to keep it within my risk boundary in relation to 100 shares. Of course, if if you've got a larger account, you can you can trade a thousand shares. You can afford to risk three thousand per trade. Then utilize that value. But on an easy mathematical sense, you know doing it sections by 100. The market, as far as um, position sizing, works in 100s, just to keep everything easy. And that's what's considered a what would be an even lot trade or would actually move the tick of price. Good question. Are there any other questions that I can help address? Something that I covered you want me to go over again? Or something I didn't cover that you might want me to uh, to go over quickly? Again, you know, con the, you know, options, you don't have to make them difficult. I really didn't dig into options a whole lot, but I gave you, that's, that's my exact workflow every day, okay? Minus going in and making sure you're checking and you know when earning reports are coming out and you know when there's going to be major economic events. You can do that within Metastock Zenith. You can do that. I'm sure your broker platform probably have some sort of new structure. It's not going to be as good as Metastock Zenith through Thomson Reuters, but you know, it, checking for earnings is something that is potentially widely available, depending on the services. But aside from that, if you keep it simple okay, with a structure, then you'll be able to do that. Any other technical indicators? No. No, what you're looking at, what you see in the LCI system is what I use every single day.
There's no, there's nothing additional that that is secretively hidden in the LCI that you don't get access to. Okay. Now I have other different methodologies that I might tweak under different circumstances, but that's just based off of my trading mental standpoint. It's not not anything that has to do with the system itself. But as far as indicators, no. That's why I, I built the system to be for me, because it's what you know what I wanted to look at, so that I could make time as far as analyzing, because it was taking hours and hours and hours. By doing this, I could really minimize the time that I'm analyzing the markets. The easiest way, uh, just uh, apply the template. So go ahead and right click and select apply template on your chart. Um, also from the power console, under the charting section, you'll notice the attachment on the right hand side and you'll notice the three templates that are available here. So zones is a more simplistic template that looks at the major levels with their zones. SR main is what's going to give you the minor and major levels with your stop loss and then you've got your your Fibonacci with tracements, which shows you your major, minor Fibonacci's, um, along with the scoring indicator, and then all of them, of course, show volume. Metastock Zenith, the better option. Rob, can you clarify on that for me? Uh, I would rec. It depends. Okay, so Metastock Pro or Metastock End of Day. It really comes down to how you're going to be trading. Okay? If you're working a full-time job, you're only analyzing it. You know, the end of the day after markets, then Metastock End of Day is going to fit what you need. Okay. If you want more of an edge and you want to be able to uh, look at the real-time markets, real-time data, uh, view all your option watches, and then analyze those economic events which again are so crucial you've got your earnings you've got your uh, like FMOC, FMOC FOMC that's happened this week then Metastock Zenith is the best platform that you could utilize in order to get access to that news because it's utilizing the Thomson Reuters newsfeed and Reuters okay, as we know Reuters is the world's largest global provider as far as economic information so you're going to get top top news priority and you're getting access to the same news stories that institutional traders are getting that are having to pay thousands and thousands of dollars a month for as a retail trader it's a good question okay are there any other questions we've gone uh, okay if you have any other questions okay please feel free to send me an email at info at lcinvestmentanalytics.com. Again, there's a lot of training materials available uh, on my website as well as on YouTube. And again, your sales reps at Metastock um, should have a, a pretty good knowledge behind the LCI. I've, <laughs> they've probably had to listen to me talk about it more than anybody else um, on earth. So they can help answer uh, you know, maybe more general questions about it. But again, I feel free to email me at any time. I uh, just note that, uh, of course, I am busy. I do trade uh, full time, so it might take me a day to get back to you. But I uh, should be relatively quick in the response. So. All right, perfect. Well, if there aren't any other questions, um, please feel free again to email me. It was a pleasure presenting in front of you. Hopefully, what I was able to share today can help you in your investments. Again, the LCI, it's a fantastic system, but then again, I'm biased. It works good for me, but I can promise you if you take some of the structures that I've incorporated into that, whether or not you incorporate additional indicators for confirmation, if you take those core concepts that are provided, 
it will help you to uh, structure your trades in a way that you can be more successful on those entries. So thank you again. Hopefully we can get you to join the Metastock family utilizing the uh, LCI trading system. Uh, if not, uh, best of luck with your trading endeavors. And again, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you guys so much again. Take care. Have a wonderful week, wonderful weekend. Thanks.